In this session, we're going to cover an overview of Six Sigma. So, what is Six Sigma? What's it all about? Well, Six Sigma is a philosophy, and it's about reduction of variation within processes, within things that people do, uh, and the traditional view would be, well, if we've got 99% quality, we've got 99% right first time, surely that would be good enough. Now, if you've got 99% acceptable, you've got 20,000 lost articles of mail every hour, 15 minutes, minutes a day of unsafe drinking water, 5,000 hospital procedures every week that are incorrect, over four accidents a day at major airports, 200,000 wrong prescriptions each year and seven hours every month without electricity. So I'm sure you'll agree the historical view of 99% being good enough just isn't there anymore. Now the standard was three sigma process capability which is just over 93%. The current standard that we're moving to four sigma 99.38% and then what we're aiming for with Six Sigma is world class 99.99966%. So, a little bit about the history of Six Sigma. So, where did it come from? Well, Six Sigma is a manufacturing philosophy that came from Motorola initially. They recognised that sufficient process improvement wouldn't occur using a conventional approach to quality. It was developed to help them reduce variation within a process by focusing effort on improving inputs to a process rather than reacting to outputs. So the process was failing the customer expectations. Traditionally, processes aimed for process capability of 3 to 4 sigma, so that's 93 to 99.3% acceptable. Now the customer received on average 6,200 defective products per million at best. Processes now aim for Six Sigma. This means a customer would receive 3.4 defective products per million. So we're looking to get it on target with minimum process variation. So let's understand variation for a minute. Variation exists in everything. Even the best machine can't make every unit exactly the same. The improved capability becomes a necessity due to the need of improved designs, lower costs, better performance. All of this leads to the need of tighter tolerances. This means the ability to operate to a tight tolerance without producing defects becomes a major advantage. So as we said before, we're looking to reduce the variation of those inputs to ensure that we get standardised outputs. So those key process input variables reduce the variation on those to ensure the outputs are a much higher quality. Now the methodology we use for this is something known as DMAIC. That stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve and Control. First part, Define. This is about defining your problem, defining what exactly you're trying to do. So pull a project charter together, define customers, who they are and the requirements, map business processes that we're going to look at and some of the some of the tools we would use in the define phase uh, team customer project charter, SIPOC, brainstorming, mind maps, that kind of thing. Defining those customer requirements using voice of the customer. Now the next stage of the domain process is measure. Now this is about measuring and understanding the baseline performance for the current process. Some of the tools we would use for this, data collection, user seven quality tools, tally charts, bar charts, Pareto, run charts, control charts, evaluation of measurement systems, let's look at gauge R and R, and we'll select the measures of performance as well. Let's look at you know what should be the metrics that we're going to use. The next stage of the DMAIC cycle will be analyze. Here we're seeking to prioritise the things that we should be looking at, understand better what the issues are based on the measurement that we've taken, look for clues, look for causes and look for signals of 
the areas that we should be improving. Again, you've got a list here of some of the tools we would use in there. Uh, cause and effect, fault tree, FMEA, fairly modern effect analysis, and design of experiment, and maybe some detailed process maps. The stage following on from that would be improve. Here we're looking to improve the process. There's no point in measuring and analysing it if then we don't go on to improve it. So we'll prioritise those improvements using impact versus effort, brainstorming, affinity diagrams, solution selection matrix to name but a few, pull together some tactical implementation plans and then deliver the improvements, reducing that variation systematically. Once we've carried out the improvements, what we need to do then is control the improvements that we've made. Otherwise, there's a risk that things will slip back to the way they were before. So we're looking to control the process. So we may pull together control plans, an escalation process, we're looking to prevent things happening in terms of preventing the variation occurring. So things like pokey uh, which stands for mistake or error proofing. We'd monitor the process using control charts, check sheets, documentation and standardization. So what you may ask is where does Six Sigma fit with Lean? Which is better? Well, why would you use one or the other? You would use whichever one fits the improvement that you're looking to make at the time. So Lean and Six Sigma both seek to deliver business improvements. Lean through the elimination of waste, Six Sigma through the reduction of variation. They're different in the methods used and the tools employed. Lean typically addresses the total manufacturing environment. Six Sigma typically addresses the root cause of process variation. There's significant benefit from using the most appropriate tools and improvement methodology to meet the customer requirements. So it's very, very important that we don't discard one or the other. Why would you leave one out? You know, why sacrifice speed for accuracy or accuracy for speed when you can have both?